We interrupt our regular programming to bring you an update. Well, in actual fact, I noticed something while I was editing this video that I didn't pick up during the build process or even the video itself. So for those of you eagle-eyed people out there that managed to spot the obvious mistake, which I missed until I got to the editing stage, it was actually the model number of the BMS itself. So the one that was sent out by mistake by the warehouse was actually the 100 amp version. So I have a 200 amp version. I'll show you where I got that from. But that was the problem. So I get that fitted now and I've got a fully functional battery. Back over to one of my 24 volt dump batteries as featured in the last video. So I'm going to be taking this JK BMS, which is the 200 amp version. And this is the one that should have come with the eel battery box kit. So I'm going to swap this out with the current built box and then put the 100 amp version back on this because it's a dump battery. I'm not really that bothered about it. But uh, luckily I bought this one separately, so I did have this on hand. So I can actually complete the build and get it right, ready for the next lot that I've ordered, which is coming over from Eel on the boat very soon. Right, so here we go. So here's the other JK BMS. This is the 200 amp version. So uh, let's see if we can get that on there. So that's uh, the 200 amp. So you've got obviously the model number there and all the details underneath. So this is what should have come with the kit originally. So what I've got to do now is just get this one out and then do a straight swap over. Again, the serviceability on these things is amazing. So you can just literally swap out components, take it apart and uh, just fix it if you ever need to. But again, this stuff has not failed me yet on any of my builds. I've never lost a BMS yet. So let's get on with it. So I learned a couple of things from this particular build. One, I'm doing too much at the same time, hence the reason I didn't notice this until I was doing the editing on the video. And the second thing is about the serviceability of these particular battery boxes. So what you can do is if there are ever any problems and I've not lost any yet, it's really easy just to get other parts and just swap them out and you've still got a working battery. So if it's a cell problem or a BMS, they're so simple, you can just swap those items out and you've still got a working battery. Whereas some of the pre-built ones that you buy, you've got to go through a potential warranty process and they might not have the ability to really break these batteries down easily, find the parts and then replace them. So in the thumbs up category, these DIY boxes are fully serviceable by you. And there we have it. So I don't know if you can see there, that gives you the model number again and the details on what it can go up to. So it is the one amp balance and the 100 amp continuous and obviously 200 for the peak. So that's uh, why I couldn't run that test, which is just being shown on screen at the moment. That's the reason why this uh, stopped working and that test failed. So uh, that test failed. So it would have never worked on it. It would have worked for a short period of time. So it's amazing. I got up to, I think it was 160 amps anyway. So uh, that's that. And just as a point of reference, when I took this off, I should have taken the cables out first, but the battery was already switched off. Sorry, the, the BMS was already switched off. So no harm done there, but should really take the cables out first before disconnecting. But again, that's just my preference. So let's get the new one installed now. So since that video went out, I've had a lot of interest in this 12 volt battery box. So what I've done is I've ordered a number of cells and kits from Ill Direct, and they're on the ship or should be on the ship this week to come over to the UK. So if you are interested in uh, me building you one of these, please get in touch, whatever platform you're currently watching this on, uh, the email address or direct message me. And I'm happy to have a chat with you if you want one of these built so we can sort out delivery or collection. But um, they are coming over and I am building them and there is interest in them. So if you do want one, let me know. Right, all connected up now. Okay, so let's switch it on now using this switch on the front. I've got the bleep, so let's look on my phone, give it a few seconds and hit the scan button. And there we have it. We have the 20p coming up, so let's get into that. So this will be set up incorrectly because it was set up for the old um, dump battery. So let's go in and make some changes, go into the setting. 
and let's verify the password, which again is one, two, three, four, five, six. Verify. So I'm just going to change that to four cells, obviously, because it's uh, got four cells. And the capacity I'm going to change to 280 amp hours, because that's raw cell capacity. I'm going to put this down to 0, 0.5. That's just the uh, trigger voltage on there. So calibrating voltage, the cells are quite low at the moment. So that should be that. So if we go back to the status screen and we've got cell Y resistance values now, which is usually a good sign. There's no balancing happening at the moment. Uh, it says it's got 25% battery remaining, but it's not because uh, obviously it's a uh, new setup. So all the things that I need are already enabled on here. So charge, discharge and balance. So all I need to do now is just to charge this up and uh, do a load test on it. But as that goes, that is as simple as it gets. Just changing the BMS out, still have a working battery ready to go. So there you have it. The battery box is now correctly spec with a 200 amp JK BMS. So I'm going to set up a load test to make sure that everything is working fine on that front. I need to improve my 12 volt load test capability as well, obviously, because I was using two different inverters to try and get over that 200 amp mark. But anyway, I'll address that in a future video as well. So if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just pop them in the section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to DaVinci.